Okay, hello everybody. So today, I want to talk about castles, pen holders, cellular automata and architecture. So, these are some subjects which you might not normally see within the same kind of talk, but I think that they are all quite closely related in a very strange kind of way. So, um, basically, I want to tell, tell you the story of how I created this model. Um, because I think it has some relationships to some fairly interesting things. So, uh, firstly, let me tell you why I created this. Basically, I wanted some kind of pen holder. So, I wanted to create some kind of hollow box that I could use to store pens and whatever in. Um, obviously, you could scale something like this up and use it to store flowers or whatever. Um, but I wanted something artistically interesting, and this is what I ended up generating. Um, so if you just look at this uh, for a while, you should notice um, that it really does look quite a lot like a castle in many different ways. I mean, we have these sort of battlements here, we have these kind of narrow windows which sort of look like arrow slits. In fact, if you look inside, we even have sort of pedestals. Um, where, if this was an actual castle, an archer might be able to stand to shoot arrows through these particular slits. So, I think this is a fairly curious shape, and all the more interesting for the fact that it wasn't actually designed. This shape was actually generated by a very, very simple mechanism. Uh, a mechanism called, cellular, called a cellular automata. So, um, a cellular automaton basically is a system where you have a load of cells set out in some space and these cells change states over time and the way that this happens is that the future state of a given cell just depends on the states of the cells around it currently so all the cells get updated in parallel uh, a famous example a famous two-dimensional example uh, is Conway's game of life so this is essentially a sort of 2D grid and the cells are either black or white and so Conway's Game of Life is fairly interesting because it generates some um, very intricate patterns, some very lifelike patterns using very simple rules. But this object here was actually generated using, two -dimension, using a three-dimensional cellular automata. So it's basically the same idea, it's just that we started with a cell, we started with some cells in 3D space and we had some very simple kind of 3D rules which made the system grow over time. And so um, this kind of pen holder was what I generated. So I think that one of the most interesting things about this is that the method by which this was generated, which I will show you in a few minutes, um, could also be used to generate thousands and thousands of other shapes which are also very, very interesting. Um, and really have completely different kinds of uh, architecture and all the rest of it, uh, but can be generated just as easily. Uh, and with 3D printing, you know, one can actually just hold something like this in the palm of one's hand very, very easily. So I think it's a, another thing that's fairly interesting is that we really do seem to have a kind of underlying sort of, I don't know, castle-like architecture behind this structure. Uh, you know, with the arrow-like slits, with the battlements, there's even a cross underneath. And um, there's really a lot of aspects of the way that this particular system grows, which reminds one of castles and towers and all the rest of it. Um, and it's fairly interesting. There's another paper I saw, I shall give a link in the um, description below, um, about how ancient temple architectures can be reproduced with different kinds of cellular automata. So it really does seem, well, I mean, given a cellular automata that makes interesting stuff grow, there's going to be some sort of global attributes which are going to be shared uh, by the different pieces if you look at them from a large enough scale. And so it's kind of interesting that here, the sort of attributes that we seem to be getting created are kind of, I don't know, castle-like attributes. Um, and it makes me wonder what other kinds of um, what other kinds of systems one can emulate uh, using cellular automata. I imagine it will be very surprising 
if one puts enough effort in to look at enough cellular automata, one's bound to find some with some very surprising connections with um, lots of different aspects of the real world, which we normally consider to be disparate. Anyway, um, enough of the, um, the claptrap. Let me discuss how this was actually created. Okay, so what we actually have here is an example of a totalistic cellular automata in three dimensions. So we just start with a single active cell here, a single cube. And um, the way we're going to run this thing is that we're going to update uh, the system so that the future state of a given cell just depends on the number of active cells there are around it. Uh, that's what total cell totalistic cellular automata is. And so, actually what our rule here is that um, we say that a cell is going to be active on the next time step precisely when uh, either 1, 3, 5, 6 or 9 cells um, around it are currently active. So here, when I say around it, I mean within the 3 by 3 by 3 box which um, is centered upon that cell. So, that's the rule. But it's fairly simple. Uh, however, one can see that even though we just started with a single active cell, we're actually getting a very intricate pattern emerging. And so um, this is the state of the system um, on the 10th time step. And one can see that this is very, very intricate. We have a lot of detail here. Quite a lot is hidden from us. And uh, another thing to notice is that there are several different connected pieces to this pattern. So, um, for example, if you look at one of the corners here, you can see that this is actually a separate piece. So, this can be a little bit problematic for 3D printing because uh, if you just 3D printed this pattern as is, it would just fall apart, okay? Because actually it consists of many different connected pieces. And so, what we actually want to do here is just to take the largest connected piece of this pattern and we're going to use that um, to form our model. Okay, and so what we have here is one of the largest connected components of our pattern. Um, and you can see that this is a fairly intricate shape. I mean, even if we just look at this face here, we have this cross and quite a lot of different details just here. And so we're going to use this as the, as the kind of main building block for our structure. Um, you can see that this is essentially just some kind of hollow box shape. And so what we're going to do is we're going to slice it. Um, we're going to slice it along the z-coordinates. Z so slice it along here. And um, we're going to cut it in half to make a kind of hollow box or container shape. And so, when we cut this shape in half, this is what we end up with. And you can see that um, this is quite a nice box shape. However, one thing that I don't like about it is that I think these walls are not really high enough for the kind of application that we want. And so, I'm going to stretch this thing out. I'm going to essentially stretch it into Z coordinates and make all of these blocks three times higher than they were before. Okay, so here's our final product. Um, I basically just got that last thing and then just stretched it up, um, scaling the Z coordinate uh, to make it three times larger. And so uh, one can see that we have these um, have these four things around the outside, um, which give this thing a kind of castle-like structure, and also these long kind of grooves. And uh, this shape has a fourfold symmetry, and it also has a kind of cross shape at the bottom here. And uh, it also, if we have a look inside, we also have these four different sort of pedestals around here. So of course we could manipulate this shape in many other ways, and uh, it'd be interesting to see what other kinds of structures we could get just by evolving the cellular automata for more time steps. So there you have it. 
Um, this is really a quite simple formula for making some kind of completely unique pen holder. All you just essentially do is start off with a single point of all the cellular automata, take the biggest connected piece, cut it in two, that'll normally give you some kind of open box shape, and then you can take it and stretch it out, and you have your pen holder. Of course, um, there are thousands and thousands of different cellular automata you can experiment with. It's equally easy once you've got your code written up just to look at lots of different ones, and so you can very easily find completely unique forms. Now, I'm sure that pen holders are not the extreme application of, this, of these kind of systems. Actually, I imagine that within the next sort of 20 years or so, people are going to uh, find out that 3D cellular automata and the shapes they create can be used for lots and lots of really interesting things. Um, the problem though is finding out what those things are. So um, I strongly encourage you to have a look at the different um, cellular automata, particularly the 3D ones which haven't really been studied very carefully yet, and um, try and find some applications for them. So, I mean, one could imagine lots of fairly simple applications for things like this, such as uh, lampshades and various different kinds of ornaments and boxes and so on. Um, but what about more interesting applications?